Hey everyone, this is Angel with Tech Tutelage, and in this video I'm going to show you how to build a Minecraft server on Ubuntu. This should work on any Ubuntu server, but I will be doing it on always free Ubuntu server on Oracle Cloud. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get a reserved public IP, then I'm going to create a DNS record that points to that IP, and I'm going to use Namecheap, but you can use any DNS service, and then I'm going to build the Ubuntu server on Oracle Cloud cloud and I'm going to go ahead and on top of that server install Minecraft server and connect to it with my Minecraft Java edition. All right, to begin, we're going to go ahead and get our reserved public IP. And again, Oracle gives you one free public IP per account. So to get one, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and log into your Oracle Cloud account. You can go up here in the search resources and just type reserved. And you're going to see this here that says reserved public IP. And you can go ahead and click there. And then here you can click on this blue button that says reserve public IP address. You can give it a name. I'm just going to call my Minecraft so I know that that's what that IP is for. You can give it any name. It's basically just something that once you have multiple IPs is to know which one is used for what. Then down here, you can go ahead and click on this drop down and select Oracle. So we're going to get IP from the Oracle pool and you can click on reserve public IP address. Now that you have reserved the IP, this IP will never change for you unless you release it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this IP here. I'm going to copy it on my clipboard and I'm going to go to my Namecheap account and I'm going to create a DNS record and I'm going to give my server a user friendly name so that way when I share it with my friends I, they don't have to go and type the IP address but they can just type the name of my server. So I pasted my IP here for the value and for host I'm going to call it Minecraft and I'm under my uh, tech tutelage account here so the address of my server will be minecraft.techtutelage.net and so if you're using a different service other than Namecheap it may look a little bit different but the idea is basically the same. What you want to do is give it an A record and then give it a name and point it to that reserved public IP that we just created. So I'm going to go ahead here and click save all changes. And once this is saved, I'm going to go back to Oracle Cloud. Now that we have the IP set, I'm going to go ahead up here and search for instances. And then under instances is where we're going to create our server. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create new instance. And here I'm going to give my instance a name. I'll call it Minecraft and then in placement here for availability domain I'll just keep the default if for some reason it tells you that there's no availability then you can go ahead and change it but for now I just keep the default then I'm gonna come here and under shape I'm gonna go ahead and select Ubuntu server so I'm gonna click here on canonical Ubuntu and I'm gonna get the latest version 2204 I'm gonna go ahead and click and select image and then I'm going to scroll down and under shape, I'm going to go ahead and get the maximum that they give me. So I'm going to pick an ARM based processor and I'm going to go ahead and click on this check button here and I'm going to get the maximum that they give me for free, which will be four CPUs and 24 gigs of RAM. And you get this warning here that will say that we'll reach the service limit, but that's all right. So then I'm going to go ahead and click on select shape. And as you can see, now we are preparing a Ubuntu server on the ARM processor with 24 gigs of RAM and four cores. Then I'm going to scroll down here and if you want to use your own SSH keys you can do that or you can generate a pair. You use those to connect to the server. In my case I currently don't have any keys so I'm going to go ahead and generate a pair. So you can click on the drop down button here to get the private key and you can also get your public key. Then we can keep scrolling down and since I use all that was given to me from Oracle for free. I'm also gonna uh, use the maximum allowed from them for my disk. So here I'm gonna change just to specify a custom boot volume and from 50 I'm gonna do 200 gigs because this is what they give me for free. And again you're gonna get this warning that uh, you're gonna reach the maximum of the free resources allowed and they'll prompt you to upgrade to a paid version but in my case I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. And go ahead and click create and then my machine will start provisioning and after a minute or so the machine will be up and running. 
All right, after the machine is up and running, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and assign that uh, reserved IP that we just got. So if you can see my public IP right now is a different IP, I need to go ahead and change that here and assign the reserved IP to my server. So to do that, you can go ahead and scroll down here and on the left side, uh, you can click attached VIN NIC here. And then here you can select your NIC here. And then here you can click on IP addresses. You can see here our public address and we're gonna go ahead and change that. So right now, as you can see, is ephemeral and we're gonna change that to a reserved. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit. And then the first thing you need to do is turn off the public IP. And once you unassign the public IP, you can go ahead and click on the three dots, edit. And now we're gonna go ahead and assign the reserved public IP. And then from here, you can click on the drop down and select that IP and then click on update. All right, so the IP ends on 2.36. So if I go back to my machine, and you can see that my public IP ends in 236. So that's that reserved IP that we just got. So the next thing that you want to do is while you're still here in Oracle, you want to go ahead and open some ports here that we'll need for our Minecraft server. And that will be port 25565. So you want to go click here and search and you can search for virtual cloud networks. And then once you get here, you can select your VCN. And then on the left side, you can go ahead and click on security lists and then click on the default security list. And then I already have this port open, but all you have to do is click on add an ingress rule. And then here you can give it 0.0.0.0 uh, slash zero. And this will allow connections to your server from the internet. So anyone that uh, is on the internet will be able to access your server. And then for the destination port, uh, you want to give it 25565. And then you can give it a description, Minecraft. And you can go ahead and click on add ingress rules. I'm not going to do that since I already have this rule. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel. But you can see it that I have it right down here. All right, and now that you have this all done, you can go ahead and connect to our server. So I'm gonna to go to my terminal, and the first thing I wanna do is go to my downloads folder. And I'm gonna list it here, and the keys that I just downloaded when I build my instance will be here. And I wanna change the permissions to my private key, so it will be this one. So I'm gonna change it to 600, so mod. 600 and then the next thing i'm doing is go ahead and connect to my server so i'm going to say ssh dash i and then pass my ssh key and i'm going to use user ubuntu and then i'm going to give it the ip of my server actually i don't have to give it the ip i can just try to do it with the address that we just created so if i say minecraft dot tech to bridge net and we'll see if my DNS is working and there you go as you can see I typed my address and I was able to reach out to the server without typing the IP so I'm gonna go ahead and say yes here and there you go I'm connecting to the server so I'm gonna clear my screen and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to root but you can do it with any other user as long as you have sudo privileges and I'm gonna go to my home directory my screen again and so the next thing that you want to do is we already open the port on our firewall on the oracle cloud but we also want to open our port 25565 on our ip tables in ubuntu so i'm going to go to nano etsy ip tables and then I'm going to go to rules version 4. And here I'm going to go down and create a TCP rule that will allow port 25565. So I'm going to copy this rule here, paste it right under it, and then say 25565. And go ahead and save the file. And then to reload this configuration, I'm going to type IP tables restore. And then I'm gonna give the path to the Etsy IP tables rules version four. There we go. And so now my port should be open, so I should be ready to go ahead and install my server. So one more thing that we need to do is we're going to have to install Java. And by default, the Ubuntu server comes with repositories for Java 11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add another repository that will allow us to install Java 17, because that's what we need for the latest uh, Minecraft server. So we're gonna go ahead and run this command here that will add the repository that will allow us to uh, download Java 17. And then we hit enter. And then once that's done, I'm gonna run apt 
update and then you can go ahead and run app upgrade but to save some time i'm not going to do that now um, the next thing i'm going to do is go ahead and install my job so i'm going to run app install open jdk 17 jra headless and i'm going to put all these commands in the description of the video so you can have them all right and once we have the java installed i'm going to go ahead and download the latest version of the uh, minecraft server so i'm going to run this and I have it here. You can go ahead and list it. You can see it in the server jar. I'm going to make a directory Minecraft in my op directory, and that's where I'm going to run my server from. So I'm going to say make their op Minecraft. Okay, and I'm going to copy this server file in there, but I will call it Minecraft underscore server. And the version of the server that I have is 119, and it's a jar file. And I forgot to put the path here up in Minecraft. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that file over. And then I'm going to go ahead and move to that directory. So up Minecraft. There we go. And if I list it here, we can see that the file that we just copied over. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to start an application called Screen. What that application will allow me to do is when I start my Minecraft server, I will be able to exit terminal and that won't kill my server because if you don't use that, if you close your SSH session to your server, your Minecraft server is going to die. And using screen will keep the session open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run on the following command. Screen dash S and then you can give it any name. I'm just going to call mine Minecraft. There we go. And you see how it cleared the screen and it started a new session. So here in this new session, I'm going to run commands that will actually start our server. So this is the command that I'm going to run. And basically, we're going to use Java to start our server without a GUI since we're running it on a headless Ubuntu server. And we're going to allocate 2 gigs of RAM to start and the maximum of 8. And you can change those numbers. You can play with them. Since I have 24 gigs, I guess I can add more. But for now, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And you're going to go ahead and click Enter here. Here. And this will error out. And the reason why it will error out is because you're going to have to accept the, um, if you read it here, you're going to have to accept the end user license agreement. So to do that, if you list this directory, you're going to see that the, we have this EULA text file. So you're going to want to go ahead and open this file. And in this file, we're going to go here to this very bottom line and replace false with true. So basically, you're saying that you are agreeing with their license agreement. And once you have that done, you can go ahead and start the server. But first, I'm going to show you one more thing. So I'm going to list this directory again. And there's this server properties file. It's actually a very important file. This is where all the configurations for the servers are stored. So if you look at it here, you can kind of set up your server the way you want it. So you can give your server like a message of the day. You can change the ports. You can pick the difficulty of the game, how many players can play at the same time, and all that kind of fun stuff. I'm not going to make any changes to it, but it's something that is nice for you to know. If you want to customize your server, you can come and do it here in this file. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to exit and keep the defaults. And then again, I'm going to run this command here so I can start my server. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And this will take a couple of minutes here. All right, now that my server is up and running, you can just run this help command. And this will list you all the commands that you can run on your server. You can set up time. You can, I guess, change the weather of your world and all that kind of fun stuff. I'll recommend you go and pull the server menu and see what each of these commands do. If you want to kind of play around with it a little bit but for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead now and connect to my server with my minecraft java edition so i'm going to go out here and i'm going to start my minecraft once it's up and running you can go ahead and select multiplayer here and here you can go ahead and add a server and you can give it a name i'm just going to call it minecraft server all cei for oracle cloud infrastructure and then here i'll give it my address so again if you didn't do dns you're going to use that reserve public ip in my case i set up a dns record so i'm just going to use my the name of my server so minecraft dot tech tutelage.net and i'm going to go ahead and click done and as you can see this turned green here which means that i was able to talk to my server and then i'm going to go ahead select it and click on join server and if i go back to my terminal here you're going to see now some activity in my server console 
you're gonna see that um, it shows you that my user 1122334 joined the game. And if I go back here, I'm actually in the game. I can, I guess I can move around and start walking. I guess I can come here and be that cow or whatever kind of animal this is. And just to kind of demonstrate you, I'm gonna go back here and let's say, you know, since I'm in the console, in the server, I can run commands against the server. So if you look at right now, it's a nice and you know nice blue sky. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna run weather rain. I got the command from here, right? Weather rain. If I run this command, this should start rain in my world here, right? So if I go back, oh, it's actually snowing. I guess it's it's, uh, it's a winter here. I guess. So the other thing that I want to show you is I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna show you how to use the screen now to exit since this session is in the screen. What we're going to do is we're going to exit it so that way we can terminate our SSH connection to our server and our server will be keep running, right? It won't die. So to do that, what you're going to have to do is click on Control A and D. So again, Control A, D, and that will get you out the screen. And see, I went back to that last screen that I was on before I started the screen session. And so as you can see right now, my server is still up and running. It didn't kick me out. So what you can do is you can run screen dash list and this will show you the open sessions that you have and so if you want to attach again to that session and run some commands against your server all you have to do is run screen dash r and you can get this session number here 4358 or you can just run it like this and that will get you back into the server right and again if you want to exit you do control a and d and you're out I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post in the comment section under the video. And if you liked it, please click on the like button. And if you want to see some more of my videos, please go ahead and subscribe for my channel. Thanks for watching.